it's Sarah. I have been playing. I have two new books. The first one is the one I'm going to talk about today, and then I'm going to talk about the other one um, in another video. But I ordered these two books on Amazon, and I got them, oh, let's see, like over the weekend. I think I got them Saturday. The Art of Whimsical Lettering by Joanne Sharp. Um, she is pretty good with her lettering techniques. I wasn't too sure about the book at first because she was saying you have to embrace your own handwriting and I don't like my own handwriting. I don't know why. Like I made this little accordion book. I don't like the way that looks but I'm starting. I have been playing and working and doing what she's saying and I'm starting to find some lettering that I do like. Um, so I made this and I I've been pulling all my different pens and everything. Um, it's a pretty, I would say, um, it's been helpful so far. And I haven't really done much yet. I'm still at, like, the very beginning where I've just created this um, a lettering notebook. So this is your basic um, composition book. And I just put some of my jelly plate prints, I just ripped it up and collaged some different jelly prints on there and use washi tape and stuff and just put artful lettering which I don't like I don't like my lettering I don't like it I don't know why it just bothers me um, I used this is my big brush the Faber Castell big brush and that's what she likes to do like cursive writing in but what I'm really liking and I've been doing some of the she has I think about 20 or more different drills that you can do hold on 22 25 so I'm only on like number five so um, I think what I'm gonna do is every day I'm just gonna do one now a couple of them are gathering um, fonts from the internet or um, gathering different um, like brochures and things that you find out and about that kind of inspire you with their lettering and the way they arrange their lettering on a brochure like um, <clears throat> you know she has you writing tall or writing fat or writing long or writing thin all different ways that you might I might not have tried before and I actually I really like the way that looks like I like the way it looks when I just do it oh I did some playing on um graph paper that was really cool I actually started before I wasn't going to do the um the little composition book but I ended up doing it because I thought no I'm gonna I'm gonna do it I'm gonna invest some time which is like not even 15 minutes that I can just like play with a pen it's not a big deal but I did do the graph paper drill that she had so I just like glued this graph paper down and I really like how if you just play with sizing see how it says there so I've got five blocks for the whole word but only I only use two for the small case letters I don't know like I thought that looked really cool um, and then you can just size it down so three and one so you know what I mean um, and different like with pencil pens like this is actually a sharpie oh no 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 um, a, a Copic with the the chisel point end of it and I like how that writes I'm finding that I'm liking I actually yesterday went and got a few things um, to play with so I'll show you that but yeah this was a cool drill and then I mean I'm just literally I was using every pen that I have um, and just seeing so this again is the, is the um, Copic with the fat end and I really like that in printing but see that's my handwriting and then this was trying it with a little twist on how she does it, like how she makes her S's. And like the W had a longer one and the R has a longer one. Like I don't think to do that myself. Um, so it was nice to just have prompts, like kind of prompts. And then she definitely does the journaling like this. Like I, these are called something. What does she call it? Uh whimsy grid a whimsy grid and like you could even just make a grid with the with the thick part of your Copic so like I could just use that as a grid so just go 
boom, 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 and then write on those with a, like a fine point pen, you know, use that as your grid. So I was really playing in here quite a bit at first. I just wrote alphabets like crazy, just wrote alphabets all different ways. She has you like decorating them. If you do a thick letter, just decorate them and it makes it cool. But I mean, I wish I would have done it on my little like here. I don't know. I, I just, for some reason, this just isn't my cup of tea. Like I should have, I should have um, done it with block letters, you know? Um, let's see, I did one on here. This is the block letters, and I kind of like that better. I don't love it. That's with a Copic, but it's on watercolor paper, so it might have absorbed in. Um, this is just a piece that she kind of, I copied her again. Play, practice, write, repeat. So, like, you just have to practice. Like, this is the whimsy, um, what did she call it? Whimsy grid? A whimsy grid. And... That's another thing that um, Diane Reevely does in her journaling a lot. And an art journal is basically, it's like a place to write your thoughts down, but then you doodle around it and you make it artsy too. And a lot of people have forgotten the actual journaling part of the journal, which is writing. And I, I don't like, but you know what I love? I'm sorry. I don't like my writing. But this was, this is, these are cool. I've had these. I got these on clearance, I think. These are the Faber Castell pit pens, and these are the bold. So they have like a brush. It might be called a brush or a bold. It's got a B. But this color right here, which is called sky blue, is so pretty. Like, I just put it to the left of all my letters, I have all my down strokes, right? And on top and it's it like makes such a cool shadowing effect like I love that that was a definite um, cool thing I figured out um, what else this was something that she had in her book she does a lot and of course I don't have Tombow markers um, but I do have the Tim Holtz markers because the Tombow ones she uses to watercolor with so this was made from watercolor paper so I just did a very similar thing that she had, um, and I love how that turned out. Like, I would love to do more of that in my art journal. Um, I don't have a watercolor art journal, and I did just get yesterday this. Um, it was on clearance. I don't know if it was on clearance or just on sale, but it's the visual journal, the Strathmore visual journal. Because I think Joanne is um, a spokesperson for Strathmore. So she did, There's if you go to the YouTube channel for um, Strathmore, I guess it's called. I, I forget what it's called exactly, but that's the company. See Strathmore, the paper. Joanne Sharp did several tutorials using their visual journal, but it was the watercolor one. And this was the mixed media one, but it was still, it was like, oh, here's my receipt. Um, I think it was regularly $9.99, and I got it for $5.88. So it was like 40% off, I guess, right? Something like that, which is, you know, pretty good. I mean, I love saving money. So, And I wanted to have it. This is the Bristol Vellum, I guess it's called Vellum Finish. I don't know if, it, if it's Bristol or not. A 500 series, 100% cotton vellum finish. Anyway, it's really pretty smooth, nice paper, but it's a mixed media journal. So I was thinking I want to have that just in case because um, I'm, I'm still going to do um, mixed media-ish in here, um, but I may do more. I don't know. Maybe I'll switch this to be more... Um, I don't know because this paper is like more of a sketchbook so maybe I'll just do sketching in here and stuff and I'll just keep the mixed media in here although I do like that it opens like that like it's a full layout anyway it was just it was just a good deal and I thought hey you know what I I can never have too many journals so the one thing that I didn't I got yesterday and I wasn't really pleased with it oh look I got a color wheel this was very helpful. I kind of wrote down a lot of the stuff about the color wheel, understanding color, what's complementary and stuff like that. It was really cool to have that. Um, was I got this. I got, and this is by Speedball. 
and it's just um I guess it's called pen and ink it's calligraphy ink and I really couldn't get this to work it's just one nib and it's a really pointy one it doesn't have some of them have like a a rounded tip this is like literally a point like it's a very point like you could hurt yourself and I think I did do oh I found these are my um I'm sorry I'm all over the place but my Stadler pens I love these I forgot about these I was using them for my um, planner and these are great fine point markers these are really good and I have them in neon too so for lettering and stuff I want to remember that I have them but I like kind of went through all my pens and pulled um, ones that I hadn't that were kind of sitting around and I hadn't been using um, and so I used them so yeah this is all the color wheel stuff that's the notes I took on that um, and then I wanted to, all right, I guess I finished, but I wanted to show, I thought I did some with this ink, this pen and ink. I want to see if I can just do it real quick right now. I couldn't get this to write, and this is a really nice paper in here. I don't know what, because I covered the cover, I don't know, I think it's probably a Strathmore journal. I'm not sure what type of paper it is, but it's like a really thick paper. So when I tried to use this um, pen, and I have no experience with this whatsoever, um, I just, I'm going to write my name. It doesn't work. It just like kind of sticks into the page. Like it, um, you know what I mean? Like it, it scratches it in such a way that it like, won't even write like it I guess I should invest in a better one but I just wanted to try it I think it was like $5.99 see I can't even get it to write and then it just splashes I can't get it to write I guess when I've watched before And it's like, it looks like it's a split tip. The tip is actually split. I can't get it to write. So that was a waste of money. Um, but yeah, so the book itself, The Art of Whimsical Lettering by Joanne Sharp, I think it's worth it. Um, not to say that anybody should go get it. I am not trying to get anybody to, you know, say that you have to have this. Just play with pens and doodle. That's all you have to do. It's just that I like instruction. I like to be told how to do stuff. It makes me feel more comfortable. Otherwise, I just feel like, um, I don't know, I'm just, uh, I don't know. I, I don't feel confident. And so that helps me feel confident. But yeah, so let me show you one other thing I did get that I really like. These are by Speedball as well. These are the elegant writers. Let me see. I have I ended up getting two more yesterday. I had the 3.0. So here's the 3.0 B. It's elegant writer by Speedball. I got the 2.0, which is a fine, and the 1.3, which is an extra fine. And I wouldn't recommend this. It's pretty much a regular ballpoint pen. Like it doesn't do anything. But look what um, all right, let's see. I think that's the 3.0. I'm going to do another page because I really love writing with this. So this is the 3.0. No, that's the 2.0. Here's the 3.0. And it has like a chiseled edge. So it's got a very straight line and then a very thick line. So it's like a calligraphy pen. So like if I write my name, and I like to do it this way, It just looks nice. I like it. And I'm sure if I practice more, I could get better, like, thick and thin. Because, like, if that was holding it with the thick part horizontal, now I'm going to put the thick part vertical. And let's see how I can, I'm going to do it this way.
I really, 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 really like these. Like, it just makes your writing look cool. Like, you, you can't go wrong. So that's the 3.0. So I wanted to see what, like, a thinner one was like. This is the 2.0, and I would recommend the 2.0 as well. Let's see. I'm going to go. Let's do some printing. You don't see the change in thick to thin as much, and then with the with the smaller one, you really don't see it. Like this is very hard to see the change. Like let's see, I'm gonna just do A, B, yeah. But I like them. That's I mean, I think these make me feel like I can be successful. I don't know. I got the big brush, which is just like, she likes writing cursive with it. I don't like my cursive. I don't know why. It's just annoying. And there's nothing I can do that makes, I love this brush, but I don't like the writing. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to use this to keep practicing. Just keep playing and feeling it out and seeing what works best on my husband's home. What works best for me. And like I said, um, you can go to the, let me see, this is, I just wanted to see if she recommended any, because I don't know if she has a website. See, she has a DVD series. Um, oh, look, that's my other book I got, Carved Stamp Play. Um, but yeah, so cloth, paper, scissors might have, um, there's other stuff back here. Resources, so she's got Copic. Yeah, Strathmore Artists. So if you go to the Strathmore website, I'm sure there'll be other type, type tutorials and stuff. But all right, you guys. So I'll be back with the other book review next time. All right. Thanks for watching.